we are doing some fundraising events, such as on, on uh, July 24th, we will be doing an auction in East Dorset. Uh, we've, th we've done this auction for previous years, and we've been able to raise close to $10,000. Every dime that we raise in that auction well, we'll be going towards the second house that we will be building in the Bennington area. Uh, and the family that will live in that house are Laura and Alfonso Giorgi and their family. This will be a four bedroom home. Uh, we are, we believe we're close to closing on the property. Uh, and uh, I'm not gonna say where it is yet because we haven't closed on it yet. We, it has to pass, the property that we would like to buy has to be permitted by, through Act 250 first. And we need to know that it will support this, a septic for a four bedroom home. But we think we're probably one or two weeks away from knowing the answers to those two questions. We are making a very special appeal to people in the, in the area to help us uh, making donations so that we can build that second home. Uh, many people don't understand how it works and uh, the family, uh, when, they, when we get done building the, the, uh, the home, will assume a, a mortgage, which is interest free, uh, and it will be for the life of, of the mortgage, which will probably be 30 years. And uh, as invaluable as, as the volunteer labor is, there is no charge for that. We only, the mortgage will only amount to what we actually have into it in terms of the cost of materials, the cost of any services that we can't get donated, and uh, many of the materials and services that we have are heavily discounted or are donated, uh, keeping our costs down and therefore the cost of the mortgage down. The other thing that is very important to realize is that the, the, we, the family, every family will not assume a mortgage that represents more than 30% of their annual income. It's capped. So they will not be paying more than 30% for their mortgage, for their property taxes, and for their property insurance. So if we actually have more into it than that represents, we will reduce the price of the mortgage until it, those three things will not be more than 30% of their annual income. So uh, it's, it's a very, both families had compelling needs and uh, we are anxious to start this second home at the, uh, at the beginning of, of September, uh, maybe mid-September, but at least in time so that we can have it closed in so that we can work throughout the winter months. We have to have it closed in because we need to be able to heat the home so that we can do things like sheetrock and the plumbing. And, and so we have to have water and we have to have the home heated uh, to make it possible to continue to work throughout the winter. Our goal is to finish the house uh, early spring next year. We will not, our board will not vote to start this home unless we know we have sufficient funds raised or committed so that we know that when we start the home we can finish. We don't want to be have it closed in like you see in front of you right now and and not be able to do the interior work. Now Dick, how much money has been raised towards the uh, second house? Roughly, roughly. roughly. Uh, I Well, let's start with how much we think it's really going to cost. We think it's probably going to cost uh, 40,000 for the land and our budget we're budgeting about 110,000 maybe a little less for the actual building materials and cost of, of um, contract services so our goal is 150,000 now some of that we will be able to raise in terms of value of gift of services if a plumber or electrician will donate then that can get our costs down um, so you know we're always asking contractors to work with us on the price and and so but that's a rough estimate uh, we believe that we probably have about half of that amount committed we we believe we need about seventy five thousand all tax deductible is so long as the gift is made 
to habitat, Bennington area habitat. Now, I used to say that's very important that it be designated and it can be restricted to the Bennington area. Uh, but please know that any, any contribution that is, is made right now is going to that second home. Now, the money, uh, the monies that you collect each month in mortgages from uh, the families that have already been selected by Habitat and currently living in Habitat homes, that money rolls over in kind of a, like a revolving fund to help pay for new houses. And then the new mortgages right. that the Georgies and the Reeds will be um, signing up for, well, that, that money will go back into this pot, right? Exactly. That, that pot is called a fund by Habitat. It's called, we call the Fund for Humanity. Okay. And, and so you're absolutely correct. And what that does is we have operating expenses. For example, you see this, the, the scaffolding around the house. That was a big capital investment we made this year. It will not go into the cost, the value of this house. Right. But we spent um, $13,000 to buy that scaffolding. And you can see it's safe uh, to have volunteers up there. Uh, working all the way around the house. Right. That's a very important investment, but we have to pay for that right. somehow. And so uh, more, our mortgage payments help to do that. We maintain a website that has cost. We have a phone. Yeah. We do several mailings. But, but those are minimum. <coughs> and the other, they're, you know, That's the right. running is minimum. 95% of every dollar that we raise goes into what you see there. That's great. That's, that's what we're, we're trying to do. So, so right now in Bennington, or in, in this this uh, this show will be broadcast or er, cable cast in Manchester, Williamstown, Massachusetts, and the Bennington area. People can send cash uh, donations where, or like checks. Uh, they can send uh, their contributions to uh, Bennington area habitat, and our post office box is 524 Dorset and 05251. Um, I have to lift him at least seven times a day from bed to the chair, back to bed, to the tub. This Hoyer lift would be a great help for her. Um, it's designed for a one-person lift. Lucas technically should be a two-person lift, but because I'm not here to help her during the day, then she's, she has to do it herself. And this would really help us a lot if we can maneuver it throughout the house. But as you can see, it's a little tight in here. So because of all the lifting, my nurse, Lucas's nurse hurt herself almost a year ago, and I have not gotten any more help. As you can see, it's very tight in this hallway, so we can't even really get his chair into his room, which would make it a little bit easier to get him out of his chair onto his bed. But what we have to do is we have to kind of set him out, out here in the hallway. As you can see, when he was being lifted, he was all scrunched up. Um, it's not the best for him. You can see that he wasn't very comfortable with it. His uh, little hips will crack um, when you're lifting him. And he does um, grimace. His facial expressions will, will let us know that. Um, the reality of it is, when you're taking somebody out of the tub, the floors get wet and things become slippery. So there's corners and knobs all over the place where Lucas could hit his head, and I could slip. If the nurses aren't able to help him any longer, how is Laura going to be able to, as, as the years goes by and he gets bigger and the, starts weighing more, I can see her having problems, and even Alfonso, he's a man, but when the kid gets a little bit older, I mean, it, it will wear on anybody's back having to lift them up and, and all the way it is. Um, they definitely do need a um, handicap accessible home.